What's up guys? Today we're going to show you how to replace the rear brake pads and rotors on this 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, steps should be the same for the 2005 to 2010 model years of Grand Cherokee. So the first step is going to be to chalk the front wheels. So these are the items needed to do the job. Obviously you'll need new brake pads as well as rotors if you're doing rotors. I'll put all of this stuff in the video description below. Uh, you'll need either a breaker bar, a ratchet, or an impact, as well as a 19 millimeter or a three quarter inch socket to get the lug nuts off. You'll also need a big flathead screwdriver or pry bar, a hammer, a 13 millimeter socket with ratchet, or a 13 millimeter wrench or ratchet wrench. And then I also highly recommend a screwdriver or a pick, as well as a half inch torque wrench, three eighths torque wrench, file, metal brush, C-clamp, and some anti-seize, as well as maybe some grease lube. Then if you don't have an impact, um, you're gonna have to use a breaker bar to break the lug nuts loose before you jack the Jeep up. That's gonna be a three quarter or 19 millimeter socket. Uh, I have an impact, so I've gone ahead and jacked up the Jeep and supported the rear axle with stands. I'm gonna go ahead and use my impact with the three quarter and get the lug nuts off so I can remove the wheel. Now that the wheel is removed, this is actually a first for me, but there's actually a rubber O-ring right here, as you can see, and it kind of holds the rotor on. You can't really get the rotor off without removing the O-ring. You're gonna have to fight it really, really hard. So I recommend either using a little pick like this, or you can use a little flat blade uh, pocket screwdriver, and we're gonna get underneath that O-ring this isn't really necessary in my opinion. Most vehicles don't have this, but I think I'll probably put it back together with it anyways, but you're gonna kind of just get your pick or screwdriver under it without trying to rip it and then just pull it off like that. If you've got a bunch of rust or corrosion built up, you might have to run the pick or driver around it to get that out before you can really get to the O-ring. Now this is where a big flathead screwdriver or a pry bar comes in handy if you don't have a C-clamp. What you're going to do is get the driver or pry bar in here like this onto the left, but well, we're on the passenger side here. So here is your caliper piston. This is the backing plate for your pad and this is the rotor. So we want to get it between the pad and the rotor here and then pry against the caliper. And what that'll do is push, see now I can reposition, it's gonna push the caliper piston back in, which we need to do uh, in order to get the new pads on. You can also try to get the screwdriver in between the rotor and the pad like this, and then continue pressing the piston in. Next, I'm gonna use a deep well 13 millimeter to remove the upper caliper bolt and the lower caliper bolt. Now using a pry bar or a big flathead, we can go ahead and sort of pry the caliper off. As you see here, this top clip, when I'm prying on it, is keeping the caliper from coming off. So while you're prying on it, you have to use your other hand uh, with like a screwdriver or something. Press, I guess you can use your finger. Press, press down on it and then pry. Like that. Now I like to use a bungee cord or dedicated hanger tools for the caliper once you get it off because I don't like to let it hang by the rubber hose, um, but this is a small enough caliper and I forgot to bring a bungee cord or my hanging hooks. So as you can see here, we got one pad fully worn out and the other one has decent life left, which means I think this piston is probably seized and because our slide pins, see there's piston or slide pin seized and our slide pins move fine. So I think our piston's bad here. We might have to do a caliper. Uh, I was struggling to push the piston back in with the pry bar method. So we're gonna have to remove the outer pad first and that is just held in place with this clip here. So what you're gonna do basically is push this direction on the pad and kind of lift up on it. Something like that. 
There we go. Now, if you're doing the C-clamp method, what you do is you leave the inner pad onto the piston like this, and you'll just kind of grip the whole caliper and you'll tighten your C-clamp. Now, the piston is going in. I, uh, I, I don't know what's going on, why that one pad was worn out. I'm, I'm not using a whole lot of pressure on the C-clamp and it's moving, so that's kind of weird. I think we're gonna, gonna try running this caliper. Compress the caliper piston all the way until the pad is flush with the body of the caliper and then remove the old pad and the C-clamp. There we go. Also, if you see any major cracks or chunks missing out of the piston right here on the caliper or if it's really wet around here like the boot is leaking fluid, you'll need to go ahead and replace the caliper. Now I've got the caliper just resting on the lower control arm here and it's time to get the rotor off. If it's rusted on like mine is, there's a backing plate here you don't want to hit with a hammer. So go right here where the caliper mounts, there's no backing plate, and hit with a hammer on the back side of the rotor. If you have to, if you see it's cocked like it is right here where there's more or less of the lip here and more here, um, then you'll have to use a pry bar or a screwdriver and you can try to rotate. I don't think we're gonna be able to turn this because the other two wheels are on the ground and it's an all wheel drive Jeep, but um, you would have to try to turn this and hit the other side. But I think if we keep hitting it, maybe hit it back on, then try getting it off again. So as you can see, we're off this lip now, but what we're getting hung up on is the parking brake shoes because the parking brake shoes are a drum style and they go on the inside of the hat of the rotor here. And since the parking brake doesn't ever really get used, there's a ton of rust buildup on the inside of the rotor, kind of like this. And so it's a very, very tight fit. So what we're trying to do is overcome the parking brake shoes to get the rotor off. You don't want to be too aggressive here because you don't want to break the parking brake shoes. That's where it'd be handy to jack up the front of the Jeep to be able to rotate this, just kind of wear some of that rust off and hit it some more, rotate, hit, and just keep doing that until it finally comes all the way off. Luckily mine wasn't rusted too bad. I was able to just carefully stick a pry bar on this side to apply some pressure, not a lot because we don't want to bend this backing plate. Um, just a little bit of pressure and then hit here with the hammer and it popped. There we go. There you can see the parking brake shoes and all the rust we had to overcome. So now is a, a good time to replace your parking brake shoes if you need to. Mine are fine and we don't really use them, so we're not gonna get into that on this video. Uh, as you can see, the rotor here is pretty rough. We had metal on metal contact. That's why we're doing rotors and pads. Now, if your hub here is really rusty and you're feeling ambitious, you can take a steel brush and kind of go to town on the mounting surface here of the wheel, as well as right here, kind of where the O-ring and the rotor sits on. That way, everything will fit together nicer. It won't be as tight of a fit. And you can also put some anti-seize around everything when you're done. All right, just like that. And word to the wise, if you are using NICs, it gets everywhere. All right, now if you need a new hardware kit here, like if your grooves where the pads ride are really worn down or if they're really loose or something, um, I'll put that in the video description as well, this hardware kit. And I'll also put a slide pin kit if your slide pins are seized or if your boots are ripped. You wanna make sure both slide pins on the caliper move freely by finger. If they don't move like this, just by using a finger, um, that's too stiff. You gotta do something about that. Uh, take the pin out and then the boot out and sand the inside of the hole here with like sandpaper or a file and then put a boot back in. I usually lube them up so they slide in better. And then also take the pin to like a wire wheel, get all the rust, anything built up off of it and then put some lube on that and slide that back in. You want this to move nice and free, otherwise you're gonna get the same thing that happened here where one pad is still good and the other one is worn out. If you do need to replace this hardware, you can just use a pliers or a flathead like this and just lift up on the bottom one and push down on the top one. They just kind of clip into place on the caliper bracket here. And then to install the new ones, just tap them on with a hammer gently. The tops and the bottoms might be different lengths, so pay attention and match them up before you replace them. We're gonna reuse these ones. I just cleaned them up with a wire brush a bit. If you wanna put some anti-seize there, you can, but I recommend using the copper anti-seize, not the silver, because the silver uh, has metal 
debris in it that is like just as tough as steel and it'll kind of wear this down as where the copper is softer so all right now we're gonna use some brake clean or carbon choke clean or if you're in a real pinch you can use soapy water um, just make sure you get everything nice and dry and get all the soap off when you're done but what we want to do is spray this rotor face and then on the back side of it as well because the rotors come with like this shipping grease and oil which we want to get off so the brake pads work properly and they can bite in so just gonna hit it like that and then use some paper towel here to wipe it all off and now the other side now that the rotor's cleaned up we can go ahead and install it try not to grab the faces that you cleaned with brake clean if you got dirty or greasy hands grab it on the inside just get it lined up with the lugged studs and push it on like that and then what we'll do is we'll try to tap it on a little bit more with the hammer and get our o-ring back in if you have to tap it on don't hit it on the face right here we don't want to damage that just tap right here real gently kind of walk back and forth there you heard it kind of change tone when i hit it it bottomed out and now you can see the groove and we can put our o-ring back on which should be able to get on just by hand or if you're having trouble you can put one finger here and then kind of run the pick or the screwdriver around to get it on the rest of the way but should be oh i had it there we go make sure it's in the groove as you can see it's sticking out here get in there now we can take our caliper and take our new inner pad make sure the pad material is facing away from the piston and then just push to clip it into place probably need two hands It'd be a lot easier but just like that and then the outer pad has this clip on it it's gonna go like this pad material facing the other pad material and you're gonna basically get these little nubs lined up with the slots in the caliper and just kind of walk it down like that should be uh, fully clipped in there and now we can go ahead make sure your uh, brake caliper line isn't twisted like that should be like this with your bleeder right there towards the top so it's gonna go just like this and we're gonna get the bottom on first you're just gonna line up the little foot of the pads like that and then we can push forward you have to overcome this clip and also you're going to need to make sure that your slide pins both of them are pushed out far enough so that the bracket can slip in between there once both slide pins are clear of the mounting bracket and you get it most of the way you can kind of give it just some gentle taps to finish it off and now we can reinstall our caliper bolts if they're all rusty and everything take them to a wire wheel get them cleaned up and then put some anti-seize or some sort of grease on there Got a little bit of anti-seize on the threads here and on the shank of the bolt we're going to put it in and now what we're going to do is just kind of rock the caliper back and forth while pushing on the bolt until you feel it kind of get in its home which i did feel it start there so we're going to start it by hand and then we're going to torque these bolts down to about 20 foot pounds again these are a 13 millimeter Then we can reinstall our wheel make sure the studs are centered in the hole um, you do want to kind of lift up on the wheel and push in as there is a hole cut out on the back side of the wheel that lines up with that center bore that the o-ring goes around so we're going to get it put pressure on that and then start our five lug nuts they are a taper fit so what i typically do is just snug them down with the impact just a tiny bit before we lower it down that way if the wheel is off center at all um, the tapered lug nuts should kind of center out the wheel once the lug nuts are snug we can repeat all the same steps on the other side then once the other side's done make sure remove your jack stands make sure all your tools are clear and everything is out from underneath the jeep also pay attention um, the abs wire came unclipped from the brake hose I noticed on the one side so make sure to clip that back together if yours came undone lower the Jeep down and remove the wheel chalk 
And then torque your lug nuts to 100 to 120 foot pounds. With a five lug pattern like this, I like to just torque one, skip one, go to the next one, skip one, go to the next, and then go to the first one that you skipped, and then do the very last one. It's not super important, it's just good to do a star pattern, and then I go around one more time. I also recommend retorquing your lug nuts after 50 to 100 miles worth of driving because they can loosen up just a tiny bit. Now before you do anything, it's a good idea to pop the hood and check the brake fluid level. The brake fluid reservoir is right here. As you can see, the fluid level is just at the max. When you push the caliper pistons in, um, it pushes fluid back from the calipers up to the reservoir. So if your reservoir was overfilled, and you push the pistons in, then you might have a little bit of a mess up there to clean up. Um, this looks good. If you're low, top it off a bit. And then before you even start the Jeep, go ahead and give it a good couple pumps on the brake pedal. This is gonna push those pistons back out that we pushed in. And then start up the Jeep. We now have vacuum assist brakes. Pump the pedal a few more times until you get a nice firm pedal like you would normally have. And then you should be able to put it in gear and go, uh, I recommend driving the Jeep and hitting the brakes, um, you know, rel moderately to heavy a couple of times just to kind of break them in. But uh, yeah, just make sure you pump the pedal up before you put it in drive. Otherwise you're not gonna have a brake pedal the first couple applications. Those pistons have to get pushed back out. You don't wanna hit anything. And we are done. If this video helped y'all, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this. Check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.